Hello everybody. Today I'm going to do a video to show you some of the things I learned about cells and waves when I was trying to figure out how to get them to work when using epoxy. Now the, the difference between some of the things you see would be somebody doing it on a flat surface like like a you know canvas or board and then when we do it in a coaster mold it definitely changes the way that the, the epoxy works inside or for cells and waves. So I've, I've mixed some blue epoxy just to kind of show you some of the things and this will be a short video. So one of the reasons why you see me only pour in the center and then stretch at the epoxy out inside the, inside the coaster mold is to make sure each layer that I do is thin. And sometimes I, I do have a little bit of fail on the thin, <laughs> but I'll show you the difference here. So if you just pour the epoxy in until it reaches the end of the mold by itself, This is just a, a measuring stick. You can see right there how deep that is. And on this side, you can barely see it inside there. Now, one of the reasons that I do it that way is because it is hard to get resin to move if the color you put in just sinks down inside. So I'm gonna pop these bubbles. Hot gun blast. So I've mixed some white to, for the purposes of this to show you, and it's usually, I usually use Cast and Craft with a couple drops of just alcohol, white alcohol ink. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what kind of alcohol ink you use. So this is the thicker coaster. And you can kind of see how it's sunk down inside that resin right there. So I am going to be able to get it to move. It's just not going to move as easy. So let me show you a heat gun on high. And because of the depth, you see it snap back. So you can get, definitely get some beautiful effects but it, it's not, it didn't go nearly as wide as it will when you do it in the, in the thinner poured resin. So whenever you use the alcohol ink, it really does help with the cell effect. And you can see the little dots that are, that are coming up. So cells normally form, I always think of it sort of like a sandwich. When you pour, the cell is the color underneath popping through the color on the top. So you want to give the resin an opportunity to fold over the top so that the cells can pop up. And the alcohol, I think, makes it thin in places so that you can see that cell, cell happen. The other thing I learned is once it does this, leave it and it'll, it'll continue, cells will continue to show. You know, they'll continue to pop up and you might see these widen drastically, 
but if you mess with it, it all just goes away and the resin becomes like a swirling mix. And it's still pretty, it's just you won't have the cell effect. So let me show you the thin resin or the thinly poured resin. You can already see that it's not, it's not, uh, it didn't sink in there enough to color the edges of the white. You know, the, the other one it sunk in and you can see how the resin actually, you can see how it's got a blue outline on it because of how deep this resin is inside the mold. So this one does it. So I'm going to show you the same thing. And you see how it kind of stays? I mean, it does come back a little bit, but it stays where it's at. And that's because it's there's no definite, you know, no more. Uh, it's not so thick and deep that the resin wants to swing back to where it was before. So hitting it with the heat gun also is one of the methods that people use to get the cells to show. And you've you've probably seen that on acrylic pours. I love watching acrylic pours because they're so mesmerizing to look at. Um, but they hit it with the heat and that kind of like, it breaks whatever's on the tip top that's thin so that the cells can form. So I think that's a beautiful effect. And you see how much further it, further it went. So the reason I'm showing you the difference here is because a lot of the videos when people show you how to do cells and how to um, make waves, I don't think that they're not telling you to watch the thickness of your resin on purpose. I think it's just something that you start learning when you're doing it and you don't think about that. So another way I've seen people do cells and, and waves in resin is, is to, take a, to take a spatula or a flat object and to, and to move through it like this. And it's the same thing. Once you do that, you're done. You can't keep messing with it or it just starts to swirl and make, and, and it'll still be pretty, but you won't see your cells. And we'll come back to that one in a second and do it over here. Oh, that reminds me. One of the reasons that I don't talk in my videos is because of Mr. Cheddar Man. He is my Bengal kitty. <laughs> <clears throat> and he's not upset. He's just a chatty Kathy. And he definitely is a production assistant of mine. So if he were to come in here, I would show him to you. But right now he's just talking to me outside the curtain. So I'm going to do the same thing on this thinner coaster mold. I didn't get all of it, so I'm going to do I have to say, I really love the blue effects. And if you look at it, you can see little tiny bubbles on the edges of that. So this technique, I think with the spatula, the reason I got out this this most co uh, coaster over here is, I think it works better on a, on a flatter surface. So I'm gonna move these over. And we're gonna try it on this. And this is, um, these are my rejects. <laughs> that one didn't work for me. Oh, that's actually a good example of when the cells, when you keep stirring your resin and you don't get cells, this is what it'll look like. If you, I mean, it's not an ugly effect. It just, it, it mixes enough with the resin that you're not going to see that cell effect because there, it's not, it's not like that sandwich effect I was telling you about. Like you blanket the color you want over it. So. I'm just going to do this really quick. He can.
so let me show you one. It's going to look a little bit different because of the way the resin flows on the top of a flat surface. And it does make a difference how much white you put on here. So if you want the waves to be, I'm used to doing it thin because of little, you know, I'm working in little tiny coasters. If you want it to be a really vivacious wave, you have to put more white on it. And once you've done the white, it might not have the same effect if you add more, unless you're just adding more to, you know, connect a line. going to continue to roll off the edge there but look how pretty that is and I'm pretty sure it's the casting craft with the alcohol ink that kind of makes that happen a lot I haven't tried the casting craft without the alcohol and I'm going to at some point because I have a feeling it would be just as pretty but I, I just haven't done it so look how pretty that is so if I let this sit here and I'll and I'll come back in a little while and if I let it sit here those will probably continue to pop up a little bit, but that is basically what you see is what the main, it, how it's mainly going to look. So it does change, but it doesn't change a whole lot. You can see how these got a little bit bigger and it looks pretty much the same as it did right after I finished. And this one is even smaller because of the depth of that resin kind of shrunk it inward. and. So this is why I'm showing you to, to kind of pay attention to how thickly you're pouring your resin so that you, you might have a little bit more control over it when you, when you have a thinner, a thinner layer on it. So that was a mistake that I learned and it wouldn't have been something I think that uh, any of the tutorials I watched thought to say. So let's do the, the spatula on this one. I'm just going to go swipe up. Swipe up. Swipe up. Swipe up. See, I think the heat gun has a, a little bit better effect on the cells, but that looks really cool, sort of like little shark fins. And those little cells coming up are tiny. And it, most of the time when you're working in a coaster, it's gonna, the cells are gonna, you need them to be small. If they're too big, it'll just expand. And then the other thing you've probably seen me use is some little sheet of wax paper. And I also feel like that might, work really well because like this because it'll drag the whole thing. So I'm gonna go grab it like this. And I'm gonna pull it. So that's another way you can do a wave. And of course I kind of dropped it a little, I flubbed it a little bit right there, but that's a kind of a way, a way you can do a wave without using the, the heat gun, but you do need that torch. The torch does make those little things, those little cells pop up. See how pretty that is? I think that is just gorgeous right there. Heat gun. That's the thin, thinly poured resin. And, and, I, and I am going to say this is still pretty, but that's the thickly poured resin. So there's a huge difference in the mobility of your cells and your waves if you're not paying attention to how thick you've poured your resin. And let me see if I 
So that's what I wanted to show you today on how to do cells and waves. And you see how much, because I used a, quite a thick strip there, how that turned out. And these were thin strips of resin. I mean, of the white resin for the... Okay. So, since you all met Cheddar through listening to him meow at me, um, I do have a Pinterest page, the Resin As You Wish, that, that has a, tons of little videos of, uh, of the resin coasters and trays I was doing before I started the YouTube page. And I would put them on there partly because I wanted to remember things I did and colors that I've used and partly because I have an Etsy shop. Well, Resin As You Wish also has a Tink and Cheddar page, which is my two kitties, you know, it, with all the antics that they do. And you can see a um, plethora of pictures of Mr. Cheddar Man. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this short video and let me know if you have any questions or have something that you would like me if you have would like me to show you and if i can do it i will do my best to make another one thanks <laughs>